Well, good evening, sisters. A week seems like a substantial time at the beginning and then way too short at the end. So it's been a blessing. Let's begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of the graces of this retreat, all the graces that we know right now, all the graces that will reveal themselves only in time, only at the end of time, perhaps. Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask you that by faith, hope, and love, we may come to know and love his beatitude, to share in it, that we would be his, and that our whole lives would magnify you, Lord, that we would live to the praise of your glory. And let us entrust ourselves and one another to God through Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Well, my sisters, I think we can think of this whole retreat as one extended annunciation, one extended message of, firstly, firstly how good Jesus Christ is, his greatness, his divine perfections of mercy and purity and making peace, and even his human perfections, the way he has sanctified our poverty, our mourning, our meekness, our hunger. And then as we hear the message of Jesus' greatness, Jesus also announces to you that he wants this word to be in you. He wants you to carry him. He wants, right, that, that passage of who is my sister, brother, who is my mother, those who keep the word of God and do it. As men, we get brother, that's all we get. As women, you're both sister and mother. That's from him, you can trust it, right? My sister, this word wants to be made flesh in you. It probably already is. It just wants to keep growing. As St. Paul tells us, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. As St. James tells us, welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But as at the Annunciation, you may ask, but how can this be? Again, when we come up to the Beatitudes, we come up to the high mountain range of God's perfections, and we are just a grain of sand. How can this be to me, for I am far from being as merciful as Christ is, or as pure of heart as he is? I'm, my poverty isn't that blessed. <laughs> it's kind of messy. My mourning, my meekness, are, they're not blessed fully yet. And uh, thinking about Christ scattering the seed of his word, I want to warn him, Don't, I'm downtrodden. I got rocks. I got thorns. How can this be? You know the answer. The Holy Spirit, my sisters, will come upon you, has come upon you, will always be upon you, and the power of the Most High Will overshadow you. We dare to take the next step forward in sharing in Christ's beatitude because nothing is impossible for God. And again, you know the next line. You know the response. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to your word. And it is my role, my sisters, if you make that fiat, I'll be the Baptist. I'll leap for joy. I'll leap for joy, and I will repeat his mother's words, Mary's beatitude. Blessed is she who believed, 
that what was spoken to her by the Lord would be fulfilled. This is the beatitude spoken to Mary. It is in this context that Mary sings her Magnificat. And as we prepare to, to pray with the Magnificat, which we were just saying, notice we speak, if you will, if you allow me a coin a term here, in persona Mariae. We speak in her person. Uh, in, in works about priesthood, Pope Benedict XVI makes a big deal, and rightly so, that at the words of consecration, the priest is speaking in the, in the very voice of Jesus, right? His, his eye is the eye of Jesus. This is not Christ's, I mean, it is Christ's body, but I don't say that. I say, this is my body, right? And, and that's the first and foremost a shine, sign of Christ's friendship with his priests, and the power he can work through people like us to, to do that, right? In the Magnificat, we all share in Mary's I, her ego, right? That we sing not in the third person, but in the first person. And that's a sign of her motherly love. All that I have, all my songs, you can sing. You can sing with me, my children, right? She shares all that she has with us, even her eye with us. And while the, textually speaking, right, the Magnificat, we're talking about St. Luke, is beautiful, that's his feast day. Beatitudes, at least these Beatitudes are talking about St. Matthew. But there's such, there's such a beautiful overlap. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. Christ wants to share his beatitude with me so that I may magnify him. As Father Holt says, you are the gospel that people see, right? That we are, if people are going to come to know Christ, it could be by divine intervention, like for St. Paul, most of it is going to be through meeting people, right? Even then with St. Paul, he needed Ananias to show up. Right? He couldn't baptize himself. And, and so we respond, Jesus, help me magnify you. Help me magnify, because that, that's the only way people are going to ever believe that it's blessed to mourn if they meet Jesus. Otherwise, it's just, it's just never going to click. And if they're going to meet Jesus, it has to be through one of his, well, it doesn't have to be, but he chooses to come through us. Right? And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, this rejoicing is the joy of the Beatitudes, the joy of Christ. Remembering, right, we talked the first night, I have said these things to you so that, your, so that my joy may be in you, that your joy may be complete. Think of how John the Apostle, right, right over his heart, hears that, and that's how he begins his first letter. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so you may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is why we sing the Magnificat. Both out of Christ's joy, our joy, we want to share that joy, that fellowship, right? Just the way music just brings people in. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. First, we accept that we are servants, and that we're lowly, we're handmaidens, we're, we're slaves even, think about the Greek there. And we believe that the Father looks upon us with favor. We're lowly and we're favored, favored with delight, with divine predilection. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And so while Mary accepts that she is the lowly handmaiden, she's still, I mean, I want to say the chutzpah. She, got the, she dares to say, all generations will call me blessed. Right? We just went down from, the, like, I'm the lowly servant, 
and every, all generations will be blessed, right? This is a woman who believes that Christ will reveal his blessedness, his beatitude through Mary, through the whole church to all generations. And that Mary magnifies the Lord's blessedness because he is almighty. He does great things and his name is holy. It's him. He's the agent. He is what we hope in, what we trust in. And then she starts listing the great things. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. We could rephrase that, that he comforts those who fear him, those who mourn their sins and the sins of the world. He always has mercy. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He gives the kingdom to the humble, not to the proud to those who are poor in spirit, and he reveals his strength through them, the strength of his arm. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. God, the Lord, has given victory to the meek, to those who use humble love, and he has conquered the powerful, at least what the world calls the powerful, those who would use vengeful force They are nothing before the Lord, a mere breath, a man who stood so firm. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty, that the Lord satisfies those who hunger and thirst for his righteousness, for Jesus Christ and his beatitude. But those who seek something else, well, he lets them taste the emptiness of that. He lets them taste that outside of him there's nothingness. And he has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. He reveals his mercy through us. He makes us his peacemakers. He wants the world to know that we are his children and that he works even through us. A few big picture comments. The first, just to get very basic, Mary is pregnant. The Magnificat is a prayer during pregnancy. That means that the word is taking flesh within her, but is still hidden, hidden from eyes. And similarly, sometimes, often when God's at work within us, it's hidden, right? It's it's hidden even from our emotions, from our awareness, but it's it's happening and it's not stopping, right? The word of the Beatitudes is spoken. I always think, well, not always, but I often think about Mary the moment right after the Annunciation. The angel's gone, no one else is around her besides the word incarnate inside of her. He may be one cell, two cell, four cells big. She probably doesn't have any biological reaction yet. And that act of faith, right? I would be like, what just happened? She is my Lord and my God, right? Just that act of faith at something that I can't even feel yet, but it's in me, it's in my gut, right? Now, I like to think that Mary's pregnancy is beautiful, but pregnancy for others is not always beautiful, right? It's exhausting and nauseous. And sometimes when we are being formed in the Beatitudes, it's okay to feel exhausted and like first trimester, I'm gonna lose my lunch, nauseous and we still sing the Magnificat, right? I don't know what her first trimester was like, but she is making haste in the hill country, and she's about to sing a song, right? So at least for us, we should be prepared. I may feel nauseous. I should still sing the Magnificat, right? And people will say, right, you say to a pregnant woman, oh, you're glowing, and you say to nuns, oh, you look so holy, and you're like, if you only really knew, right? Uh, (laughs) We feel like a lifelong novice, we'll put it that way, right? 
And there's even those questions. And again, hopefully this wasn't true for Mary, but we can question, will I be a good parent? Right? All the, all the insecurities sort of bubble up, you know? And, and even, like, is something going to go wrong? Like, just, right? And so, again, keep singing the Magnificat, right? Even when you have those first trimester experiences. Because even if the, the mother is unsure, the baby is there, so she's a mother. The same way, again, Philippians chapter 3, even as we are striving to obtain Christ, to share his beatitude, he's already obtained us. He's already at work in us. His predestination is going to happen, right? When God wants it, even when we're a mess, God gets it done, okay? The second big picture idea is how much faith is in the Magnificat. There's, there's an incredible, well, not, oh, that's a bad use of the word incredible. There is an extraordinary amount of faith. And this is a little bit um, grammatically nerdy, but notice that when she lists the great things that God does, they're past perfect tense. They're things that are done and are over. They're not ongoing. They're not a conditional. They're not in subjunctive. They're not in the future tense. It's not like God may save us or God is saving us or God will save us. It's not like he's done it. Which you may step in, like, is this actually done? And I mean, you can, you know, interpret different ways. My interpretation is that Mary is just like in heavenly time, right? In earthly time, Jesus Christ is still just like a couple months in gestation. He still has to do the work of redemption. But she's like, if God's preordained it, it's, it's basically done. Like it's going to happen. And God's outside of time. So for him, it's basically done. It's, it's the, you know, kind of crossing the boundary of time there. But the basic, uh, right, when St. Paul says to make all prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, I think this is kind of part of it. This deep faith that if whatever God's going to give, he's going to give. So it's basically given. Now we still have to do our role here, but this great faith that God isn't in the subjunctive voice. He's not in the future tense. He does it and it's done. And so she praises him with this utter confidence that he is going to fulfill his purpose, that she trusts the Father. And especially that the Magnificat, I presume, is, is just sort of on repeat in her, in her prayer. And so she prays it in the joyful mysteries. Some of the joyful mysteries also have some sorrows involved, the presentation, finding that, you know, there was some sorrow there. And she still sings her Magnificat in the sorrowful mysteries because she has that faith. God, it's God's purpose. He's going to get it done. God does not waver. With him, it is yes. All promises find their fulfillment in Jesus Christ. That's her cushion that she can sleep on in the boat when there's squalls. And finally, my sisters, from that great faith of Mary comes the great praise of the Magnificat. The Our Father taught us to seek God's glory above all things, and that's what Mary does. Even before her son taught anyone that, she knew. That we share in Christ's beatitude so that we may share in Christ's praise of the Father that we might live the praise of his glory. And the beautiful thing here, my sisters, is that the Beatitudes, as you can see, the as like avenues of praise, they teach us to praise even when we're learning and imperfect and messy. That I will praise God in my neediness and poverty. I will glorify his riches. I will praise God when I am mourning and repenting and weeping over my sins and the sins of the whole world, I will glorify his saving blood, his justifying grace. I will praise God in my weakness and in my gentleness, and I will glorify his power 
his might. I will praise God in my hunger and thirst for righteousness, the righteousness I don't have completely yet, and maybe only 25% there, and I will glorify his goodness that satisfies. I will praise God in my forgiveness, and perhaps more accurately, in my attempts to forgive, and I will glorify his surpassing mercy, which is swift, sure, and gets the job done. I will praise God in my purity of heart, even when I realize how imperfect it is. And I will glorify God who is perfectly pure. I will glorify the God who is holy, holy, holy. I will praise God for my attempts at making peace, or even just the thought of maybe today making an attempt. And I will praise him who is peace who is our perfect peace. And I will praise God for my little endurance of the little pinpricks that get to me so much and I carry with me. And I will glorify him who loved us to the end. And so, my sisters, let me conclude with St. Paul's prayer before the Father. That's my prayer for you. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, you, he may grant you to be strengthened with might through his Spirit in the inner man, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love, may have power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge, that you, my sisters, may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. And so let us bring all of our prayers together and let us praise our Father, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, my sisters.